Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host for this episode, where I've got a few new stories I've been following for the last week or so. So I uh, hope everybody's doing well. Thanks for tuning in. Let me get right into the stories. All right, first story today is talking about Rivian. They announced their production and delivery numbers for 2021. And it's something that, of course, everybody's watching because they are one of the new, uh, you know, golden child in the EV uh, world. Um, so by the end of 2021, the company produced just over 1,000 vehicles and delivered 920 of them, all to customers in the U.S. Rivian sent out a press release, and it doesn't break out the production and sales between the models, i.e. how many were the R1T and how many were the R1S for the SUV. So these are combined numbers. But remember that the R1S SUV and the EDV electric vans for Amazon as well are, are going to be part of the numbers that they announce, especially when they entered the production and delivery stage. And recall that their target was about 1,200 vehicles produced, so they only missed it, but just by a little bit. Rivian is currently ramping up the production of three vehicles. Simultaneously, the number of pre-orders in the U.S. and Canada that we can decipher as of the end of December uh, is about 71,000 or so, which seems to be up from oh, just over 48,000 at the end of September. Now, in the next three years, Rivian intends to build a second manufacturing plant in the state of Georgia. Looks like they've announced that, which will start production in 2024. The target for this plant is up to 400,000 per year at some point in the future, and that's compared to the 200,000 production capacity in the normal Illinois plant. And that's after they upgraded it from 150,000 a year, which is where it is currently. Now, before the end of this decade, Rivian would like to produce and sell at least 1 million electric vehicles per year. So good on them. I think we should see them really wrap up production this year, but it's going to be little by little. But good going, Rivian. Switch gears to Europe and talk about Renault. They have announced that they plan to go fully electric in Europe by 2030. They want to become an all-electric car brand. Now, this applies not only to the Renault brand, but to Group Renault which includes a few brands such as Alpine and Dacia. Now, in recent months, Renault had already prepared its production for the switch to e-mobility. The heart of Renault's electric car production will be the industry cluster, which they call Renault Electricity, which comprises the Douai, Montberge, and Ruiz plants in northern France. And hopefully I didn't butcher the names too much. It was already known that the uh, Magane E Tech Electric and the Renault 5 Electric would be manufactured in Douai. Now, in December, the car maker confirmed that the Electricity Complex had also been awarded the contract to produce a future electric SUV, as well as a new vehicle that is still in the planning phase. Well, good to see Renault put a stake on the ground and start moving towards full electrification. And on that note, later this week, there is going to be an announcement from the Mitsubishi, Renault, um, and Nissan Alliance about their strategic plan updates. So I'll hopefully have more information to talk about on the next show. Switching gears to Germany to Porsche. Porsche has uh, also announced the Taycan or Taycan Sport Turismo which will launch for somewhere around 86,000 euros. Uh, they presented, it's kind of an estate body, so an elongated body for the other drive versions of the Taycan. The GTS Sport Turismo is to be launched at the end of February of this year. And the other versions, um, from the rear-wheel drive to the Turbo S, I love how they say Turbo S because there's no turbo and no, but anyway, will follow in mid-March. Now, the base Sport Turismo model has rear-wheel drive as standard, and this, along with the all-wheel drive model, are available either with a small or large battery that Porsche claims, a just under 80 kilowatt or just about a 94 kilowatt hour battery pack. Now, depending on the battery, this corresponds to an output of about 240 kilowatts or 280 kilowatts. Transfer, let me translate that to 322 horsepower or 375 horsepower in the rear-wheel drive model. And if you look at the all-wheel drive model, or in the 4S Sport Turismo, it's 320 kilowatts or 360 kilowatts or 429 horsepower, 483 horsepower, again, depending on the battery pack size um, and the motors for the 4S Sport Turismo. So lots of numbers to chew on, folks. Now, the GTS, the Turbo, and the Turbo S 
are only available with the large Performance Battery Plus, as Porsche is calling it, and consequently only with one power rating. The GTS produces 380 kilowatts or 510 horsepower, and the two turbo versions come to 460 kilowatts or 617 horsepower. It ain't over yet, folks. I got more to talk about. They only differ in the overboost power available for a short time, which is stated at 500 kilowatts, 670 horsepower for the turbo, and here we go, a whopping 560 kilowatts, 751 horsepower for the Turbo S. There you go. Lots of numbers there. Now, the Sport Turismo's WLTP range of up to about 498 kilometers is comparable to what's on the market, and the charging system is 800 volt. Now, this means that one can charge with up to 270 kilowatts of peak power, and that's for the small bat. That's for the large battery. The small battery, the peak power is 225 kilowatts which translate into a user experience on both battery packs of about 5 to 80% in about 23 minutes. So not too shabby at all. It come, they come with an 11 kilowatt AC charger as standard, and there's a 22 kilowatt option that you could purchase as well. Now, pricing ranges from about 89,000 euro to about 187,000 euros, excuse me. So this won't be an inexpensive vehicle, but... Porsche is having record sales for the Taycan. They're doing quite well with it, even though it's an expensive vehicle. And I'm sure that this vehicle will do very well as well. Now let's bring it back across the pond to North America and talk about Cadillac. They've launched or started pre-series production of their first electric model, which is the Lyric, at GM's Spring Hill assembly plant in the state of Tennessee. Now, the first deliveries of this electric vehicle are expected to take place in the next few months, so we should see something by summer or early fall. Cadillac has unveiled the production version, of course, of the Altium Base Lyric electric SUV last April, so we've seen it, we know what it looks like, we know what it's going to come with. The following September, reservations were opened last year, and in the U.S., uh, they closed again only a few minutes later because the debut edition was already sold out. Don't know how many that was. Probably several hundred, maybe a couple thousand, who knows. But hey, it's good to see that they were sold out. More vehicles are expected to be available through Cadillac dealers in the U.S. and Canada later this year. Now, additionally, in China, Cadillac began pre-sales of the Lyric last November, and the model is produced there by that GM-SAIC joint venture alliance. So for more information on the Lyric, check out Cadillac's website, and I know for one, for me, I'm really looking forward to getting behind the wheel of this vehicle, hopefully, later this year. So once in a while, I bring in some stories that talk about the non-consumer environment, and this is one of them talking about IKEA Canada. They've taken another step towards their goal of achieving 100% zero emission deliveries by 2025. The Swedish furniture and home accessories maker has expanded their partnership with a company called Bolt Logistics to add about 30 electric trucks to their delivery fleet this year. Now, 10 of the trucks have already hit the road across the country, with the remaining 20 to be added in British Columbia, Quebec, and Ontario in the first half of this year. Now, last year, IKEA added about 15 electric trucks made by Quebec's Lion Electric through their original partnership with Second Closet. Second Closet rebranded last year to now become known as Bolt Logistics. So I've connected the dots for you. IKEA has installed EV chargers in all of its Canadian locations, with the goal of a 50% reduction in relative emissions from its employees and customers by 2030. So they are pushing hard, and congratulations on IKEA. And finally, a couple quick stories that are off the beaten edge. Of course, once in a while something comes that piques the interest, and this one certainly has. A company called Thor Industries, no, not Thor the god of lightning or whatever Thor is, but a U.S. manufacturer of motorhomes, has presented two electric concepts, an electrically powered motorhome and an e-assisted caravan, or what we call here in North America, a trailer. The Airstream E-Stream Concept Caravan is based on a high-voltage electric chassis from Thor and was developed together with companies called ZF or ZF and Hymer. It has its own electric drive and batteries. Now, this means that the caravan 
should not only be able to drive itself when maneuvering, but also support the electric drive of the towing vehicle when traveling to the campsite, thus increasing the range of the vehicle and trailer combination. Now, Thor does not currently provide technical data on the Airstream eStream concept. Nevertheless, a rough estimate is possible because the platform developed by ZF and Thor subsidiary Heimer is known. In the summer of 2021, they produced a prototype caravan and they crossed the Alps with it being pulled by an Audi e-tron as the towing vehicle without recharging. It had two 90 kilowatt electric motors uh, that were installed in the e-home Coco, as they called it, and the caravan also had two 40 kilowatt hour battery packs, which are also capable of fast charging. Now, the Thor uh, has also come up with something called the Vision Vehicle or TVV motorhome concept, and it's based on an electric chassis developed jointly with Roush and is equipped with both a battery pack and a fuel cell which should allow up to 300 miles or about 480 or so kilometers of range. Now, again, no concrete performance figures or pricing or, or when this, these are going to be production uh, have been announced, but stay tuned for more. I know that this is an exciting market because a lot of people with EVs want to pull things like trailers and campers. So keep your eyes on this marketplace. And stay, sticking on the camping, Winnebago, if you're familiar with them, they are one of the world leaders in recreational vehicles. They've revealed the ERV, their first all-electric zero-emission motorhome concept recently at a show. Now, the Winnebago Industries ERV concept vehicle is an entirely new all-electric zero-emission RV or recreational vehicle that incorporates an advanced drivetrain and battery package that also powers all of the living area systems of the coach. The chassis is based on a readily available Ford Transit platform that has been modified with an advanced electrical power system from Lightning E Motors that powers the drivetrain, the vehicle controls, and the living quarters. The concept vehicle includes an 86 kilowatt hour battery configuration. Now, the company claims that the range is about 125 miles, 200 or so kilometers. Now, they say that this meets the needs of the majority, in this case, 54% of new RV buyers who prefer trips of less than 200 miles a day. So charging is possible at home, of course, at the campsite and at public charging stations. It does support DC charging um, as well. There's no rates given, but they say the charging time is about 45 minutes. So no other details provided. So you'll just have to stay tuned to learn more and keep your eyes on the Winnebago website. But again, it's good to see electrification and all these other subsidiary industries, the pleasure craft, you know, ATVs, ATCs, all this kind of stuff that's starting to happen. And the recreational vehicle is a big market. So it's nice to see that the movement is moving forward there. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. Hope you enjoyed it, Fast and Furious, today. Thanks very much for tuning in on YouTube. If you have not subscribed, please do. It would mean a lot to me. You can also click the bell to be notified of new episodes and turn on your notifications when I put stuff out there. Again, if you are a Patreon supporter, I'm always very humbled. Thank you very much. If you're interested in helping me um, to uh, continue on with these shows, you can check out the link below and see what I'm all about on Patreon. Of course, everybody continue to stay safe as we move through the global environment that we're currently at and uh, just use your common sense and follow public health guidelines and we will get through it. And of course, keep your eyes and ears on the EV marketplace. There is so, so much going on, folks, that I just can't keep up as a one-man band, but I try my darndest to do so. And until the next show, I want to, again, wish everybody to stay safe and I will see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye. <laughs>